and, and virtually um, inaccessible. The implications on the court system are, um, are difficult as well. If you look at the timing in all of the bills, it would take, if the decision were made, the appeal taken, and then up to the Supreme Court, it would take at least a month, a minimum of a month, for this decision for the young woman to ultimately get to the Supreme Court and get a decision out of them. And the reason I say that is because of the way that the, it is structured, which is, I believe, part of what this committee was trying to do, what the bill sponsors were trying to do in fixing what was already an unconstitutional bill, which did not require the decision to be made. First of all, when the young woman, she's entitled to file confidentially. But um, as in the 8th Judicial District, for example, all of our filings here are e-filings. There's a very, very small court clerk's office now. It would be virtually impossible to have a way to confidentially file something in person. That young woman is also entitled under this bill to ask for legal counsel. She has to be told that she's entitled to ask for legal counsel. If she asks for it, then that apparently court clerk is going to somehow figure out how to get her an attorney. This is all to be done in a very confidential way. Um, within five days or five judicial days of her filing that allegedly confidential petition and the court clerk apparently securing her legal counsel if she wants it to go through this, um, a judge has to schedule a hearing. Five judicial days means five court days. That means a week. Within two days of the court scheduling that hearing and um, adjudicating it under the standards that are in this statute, which are which require um, some findings, the judge is to issue a decision. That's two judicial days. She then, if if she's denied the right to to if she's denied the right not to have to secure or to have parental notification, she then has five days, five judicial days, that's a week. She has five judicial days then to file a notice of appeal with the district court. Upon her filing that notice of appeal, she then, <clears throat> excuse me, then the judicial, the district court has to perfect the appeal and send it to the Nevada Supreme Court at the same time that she files um, that appeal. That notice of appeal goes to the district court. That notifies the Supreme Court that now this, her denial has been appealed. The Nevada Supreme Court then has to put aside all of its other business, just as this district court has had to put aside all of its other business, just as this court clerk has had to put aside, put aside all of their other business. The Nevada Supreme Court has to put aside all of its other business, and within five judicial days, it too is supposed to hold a hearing on the denial of the notification. If this sounds complicated, it is. And imagine if you were perhaps not in the 8th Judicial District, which is Clark County, but perhaps you were in Ely or you were in Elko, where there are only two judges, or where there are only where there is only one judge, and where perhaps that judge is probably heavily involved in community activities and probably may need to recuse him or herself from this decision about whether to notify a minor's parents because he or she knows the minor's parents. That then a new judge would have to be brought in from a different judicial district. Once again, delaying this process, which at best can only be accomplished in about, at, at a minimum, about a month. What does that month mean? That month means that a young woman has been denied the right to safe, inexpensive medical care, and she is forced even perhaps to go into her second trimester, which is a less, um, which is a more difficult procedure, not only for her, but for her health. Um, requiring a young woman to go through this process um, implicates lots of other things. The courts are not prepared to handle these kinds of matters. The Nevada Supreme Court certainly would um, step up to the plate and require that they do, but it would be, put an incredible burden on our already overburdened courts to make decisions that they don't want to make. They don't, committing these, as all the other testimonies can tell you, committing these kinds of decisions to judges about whether or not there's a good enough parental, whether or not a young woman's testimony that she fears and tells a judge why she doesn't want to tell her parents, whether that's good enough for that judge to decide she doesn't have to, 
is a 